Insta360 released the Go Free more than six months ago. I have used the Go Free quite a lot during this time and compared it to several other cameras. During this time, there have been some innovations, new features have been added, and of course, several other cameras have been released. It therefore makes sense to do a short, updated review of the Go Free. And I would like to answer the following question today. Would I still buy the Go Free in 2024? But first, I'd like to briefly show you what's new compared to my first test more than six months ago. The firmware of the Go Free has been updated several Several times. Several new features have been added. For example, the field of view narrow has been added. The Go Free can now recognize your face and set the correct exposure accordingly. And the Go Free can now also be used as a webcam. You can now also use more accessories with the Go Free. The Go Free also supports the action remote from Insta360. And of interest to many, the Apple Watch can now also be used as a remote for the Go Free. But perhaps the coolest new feature is that the Go Free is now also available in black. And now we are faced with a real dilemma. Which is the better choice? Black or white? Here you can see both colors in direct comparison. A few thoughts on choosing the right color. One thing is clear to me, the Go Free looks much cooler in black. Because it's not just any black. Insta360 has chosen a material for the surface that reflects very little light. Take a look at the comparison with these other black tones for example. The Go Free by far reflects the least amount of light. And that looks pretty cool. Also the surface on the side of the black Go Free is much rougher and less slippery than the white version. So it's not just the same material dyed black. And of course, the black color has the advantage that dirt and signs of wear are not so easily visible. The action part of the white version is a little susceptible in this respect. On the other hand, white is the typical color of the Go Free, and I really like the camera without the action pot in white. In addition, white is of course also the somewhat friendlier color, and after all, this is also a fun camera. However, black is a little less noticeable. But in the end, it's mainly a matter of taste. What I want to say is that both colors really look good and that the new black version is something special. So, can I still recommend the Go Free to you today? After all, many new cameras have been released in recent months. For example, the Ace and the Ace Pro, the Hero 12 or the Action 4. To understand whether the Go Free is the right choice for you, I will now tell you its three biggest strengths and its three biggest weaknesses. The Go Free's biggest strength is pretty obvious. That's its small form factor and all the benefits that come with it. The Go Free delivers good image quality and with a body that you can really mount anywhere. Not only is the Go Free extremely small, Small and lightweight, it also offers multiple mounting options. The back of the camera is magnetic. You can therefore attach the Go Free to a wide variety of metallic objects without an additional mount. But that's not all. There is a locking mechanism on the top and bottom edges. This allows you to attach the small camera to a wide variety of mounts. And Insta360 offers a whole host of them. In addition to a classic GoPro mount adapter, there are several mounts with which you can attach the Go Free in the most diverse ways and in the most absurd places. There are no limits to your imagination. If you are looking for a small, lightweight camera for creative shooting angles, then the Go Free is the right choice for you. You can use the action pot like a remote control in these situations, although it should be noted that you don't need the action pot to start or stop a recording. You can do this without the action pot and without a smartphone by gently squeezing the camera at the bottom. By the way, if you are interested in how exactly the Go Free works and what features it has, then take a look at my detailed tutorial. The small size of the Go Free is super practical. But of course, it doesn't come without disadvantages. Although the Go Free has no problems with overheating and it also has a very good battery life, only a relatively small sensor can be installed in this small body. This is not necessarily a major disadvantage for taking shots in good lighting conditions. But of course, a smaller sensor can absorb less light and therefore has disadvantages, especially in poor lighting conditions. To put this into perspective, the recording quality of the Go Free in low light is only slightly worse than that of a current GoPro, but visibly worse than the quality of the Insta360 Ace Pro or the Action 4. If you often want to shoot in low light or indoors, the Ace Pro might be the better choice for you. If the small form factor is not so important in a particular situation, you can simply mount the Go Free in the action pod and have a camera with a body that is comparable to a classic action camera. And the combination with the action pod is the second great strength of the Go Free for me. Because the action pod has multiple functions. As I said, it can be used like a remote control. You can adjust all the settings with it and it also charges the Go Free. Which means that if the camera's battery is empty, you can put it in the action pod 
charge it and continue shooting immediately. And the action pod has another special feature. It has a flip up display, which is of course a huge advantage if you want to film yourself. Until the release of the Ace and the Ace Pro, this was an absolutely unique feature among action cameras. The Go 3 is therefore also very suitable for vlogging. One weakness of the Go 3, however, is the lack of 4K. The highest possible resolution on the Go 3 is 2.7K. And as you can see here in this comparison, the Go 3 can certainly keep up with 4K recordings from other cameras in good lighting conditions. But of course you can see the difference, especially on a large 4K monitor. If you mainly take your shots for social media or view them on your smartphone, the lack of 4K is not a problem. If on the other hand optimal image quality is very important to you, then you will miss a higher resolution. For me, the third major strength of the Go 3 is a feature that is unique to Insta360, the free frame mode. Although the Go 3 is relatively small, it has a surprisingly wide and large field of view. For example, the field of view is visibly wider than that of the Ace Pro or a classic GoPro. And that's not all. The sensor is square, which can be particularly useful if you often want to take vertical shots, for example for social media. And this is where the free frame mode comes into play. In this recording mode, the unstabilized and uncropped recordings of the sensor are saved. You can then freely set the format and the field of view in the app and decide in post and without additional cropping whether you want a horizontal or vertical video. No other non-360 camera offers this in this form. On the other hand, as a fan of action cameras, there is one feature that I miss on the Go 3. High frame rates for real slow motion shots. The highest possible frame rate on the Go 3 is 50 frames per second. This allows you to take slow motion shots at a maximum of 50%. This is of course not a problem for normal recordings, as you will usually be filming at 24 or 30 frames per second. But if you often take fast action shots and want to capture special tricks, you will miss real slow motion shots. I think these three important strengths and weaknesses of the Go 3 summarize well what this camera can and cannot do particularly well, and whether it will still be the right choice for you in 2024. If you want a camera that is small and light, and that you can mount and use extremely flexibly, then definitely go for it. Even today, there is simply no other camera that is as small and versatile and delivers such good image quality. If on the other hand you attach great importance to the best possible image quality and frequently want to take slow motion shots, then you should perhaps opt for a different camera, such as the Ace Pro. The Go 3 currently costs $359. However, Insta360 often has special offers. You can find the link to the Go 3 in the video description. If you use the link, you will also receive a free gift. And if you want to know more about the Go 3, take a look at my comparison test or my detailed tutorial. And give me a like as feedback if you found this video interesting. There will be more videos about the Go 3, so stay tuned and see you next time.